push for it. I've told Zach tonight he wanted to battle from nine to ten. And I've said we don't want to do that. We want to do a case tonight. Um, so I think that's the best way to do it. And I think naturally, if you look at this now, we're the regional top team, um, which is absolutely amazing. And this is from constant heart me's and from constantly being in the populace. That's what's important, right? Um, our team being recognised as being strong. These competitions, for me, being the top community on TikTok should be based on how many hours people spend in your lives, how much um, communication you have in your lives of like comments and talking. The heart me's, like sending one a day and showing that you're consistently doing it. That's how you should be able to win these competitions. Me saying to you guys, OK, well, to get to number one, we need to spend £30,000 today. That doesn't make us a strong community. Um, I know we have one of the strongest communities on TikTok because of all the support I've had on this app. So when I came back the day I came back after a three day break, the whole FYP was full of posts saying Team Comet, Team Comet. There were sounds made in my name. I get goosebumps just thinking about it. Like, hey, Devin, thank you. Um, I have had the most amazing support and backing. I have people on this app who see these hate lives and they're like that is not true that is not the Haley we know so they don't even bring it to me because they're like we know it's not her um that is what the community is about um we've restructured the whole discord today because there has been some drama over the last couple of days um and we have gone back to very much basics and i will just reiterate here what i put in the discord my mod team are a reflection of me um i love italian accents so pepperoni um <laughs> My mod team are a reflection of me and my mod team will always act in my best interest. I will never second guess my mods. I don't want to receive messages saying your mod did this, your mod did that. I'm always going to stand by my mods in every situation. And I'm, I'm really sorry, but my mods show up for me consistently every single day. Most of my mods have been here for at least 16 months now. Um, and obviously we add new ones sometimes because the platform's getting bigger. Um, they are my people and I'll still have um, relationships with them. Calm down, you're not famous. Um, Charles, uh, I don't want to be famous. Yeah, my mods show up every single day. They keep my life safe. They keep the Discord safe. When I have time off, they continue going. They do all of this stuff for me. And I'm in a really lucky position where we're actually covering cases now. And we're actually at a size where we're starting to make an impact. For instance, on the petition for Megan, um, over 4,000 of those signatures are from my community and something we've pushed for. And that's so important to have that impact. Replying to messages all day long. They are helping people. They're helping people through crises. But I just wanted to make a note on here, which I've just made in the Discord. My mods are not mental health trained, so they cannot... Um, answer when you guys are in a crisis they can point you to the right places they can give you numbers they can definitely um you know point you in the right direction but a couple of my mods at the moment are having time off because they've been so consumed by helping other people and taking in um queries about last night about sh about on a live in and it's it's all too much for them um to cope with my mods should be mental health trained um you would like me to put them all through mental health training. Yeah. Um, despite the fact that we are a true crime community, we're not, we're not nurses, we're not doctors. Um, and they actually have real life jobs and do a lot of stuff for their own children, their own families. Um, are you J160411? Are you mental health trained? Um, I take it you are, you are not. And now you're blocked. Um, gone <clears throat> yeah um so honestly just just try to understand they'll help as much as they can and they will help everyone um but it is getting to the stage now where they're worrying that people are going to do something they don't want to do um so we do normally have the the numbers around um, we did have an emotive one stage, which I will reinstate today with Shout's number on. And in the Discord, we do have a folder for mental health with all of those numbers pinned, um, no matter what country you're in. Um, the pressure of literally worrying all night that someone's going to do it, we, we can't take that on as well as doing all of this other stuff on the app. We just, we just can't. Um, and I understand there were certain things that happened last night on the app outside of my community that were really triggering. Um, 
I that is out of my control guys it's not you know my people it's not someone I know it's not anything of that and it is it's literally um if something is triggering you come off the app for the evening reach out to the right people try and get help um and do all of those things um because I don't have an answer for that either like I don't How about you I really need to leave all that behind um I have never held exposure lives by other creators on this app apart from Rochelle Medium when she was hurting, um, missing people's families. I've never made personal attacks on anyone. I've never bullied anyone. I've never um, gone for people on the app. I've simply stayed in my lane and done what we do in here. Um, and we're going to continue doing that. Um, could you do a video on a corrupt social worker that was convicted in November? Face on a classroom. If you message me on one of the mods, the... Um, the the um information then i'll have a look into it the name do you have do you think fyp shows create too much drama and hate <sighs> i think the fyp shows amplify bad behavior okay so i think it dramatizes the whole of the app and makes people constantly aware of this happened that happened and then as adults we're spending a lot of time worrying about what strangers do on the internet and to hit those FYP shows, creators then become more um, outrageous. They say things they wouldn't normally say. And it's almost like a badge of honor to appear on an FYP page because it brings you in more viewers. And kind of, I think that's very unhealthy. Um, I don't choose to, um, I don't choose to watch those things because I literally would rather look on the news about things that are really happening that are impacting society. Thank you guys um, for sending votes. Rather than I would like to be on TikTok wondering well, who said this about that, who's been racist to who today, how did they react? Because after a while it will consume you. Um, and then other people see that on the FYP show and they're like, well, tomorrow I'll do that. Um, and it will get me onto all the FYP shows. Like I want to be recognized on this app for having a brilliant community, for having impacting cases, for talking, for doing interesting lives, for having educational lives. I don't want to be recognized because so-and-so have said horrific things about me and people are making fun of me and talking about my children and everything. I just, I just don't, so I don't know what that has to do with anything about my crime content. I just, people don't have to like me. And obviously a lot of people don't. Um, but in general, I just want to go back to what I do. Um, yeah, my my FYP is all full of crime, obviously, because it's what I'm researching. So mine are kind of like 911 calls and all of this. And I do have more videos because I sometimes my video with Tori. So I can, she absolutely loves monkeys and she literally finds them really funny. So there's one video of like a gorilla sat on a wall and a little monkey runs up behind him and pokes him in the butt. Um, and after about three times, the big gorilla jumps off the wall and chases him. And she absolutely loves that video. Um, so that comes up quite a lot. Um, so if I'm not looking for any more Pringles, I've already got, I think I've already got Pringles, haven't I? I might have Hayley. Is it my Pringles or someone else's Pringles on the app? Um, <clears throat> Through. yeah so um georgina i saw a live yesterday where someone was saying like i'd done this i'd done that but what they were doing was describing the things they've actually done to me and i have never mentioned people's children i've not mentioned people's parents i certainly haven't um you know i have a father who's passed away myself something that's very very personal and still painful to me and to my family so i'm not going to go out of my way to mock other people for those same things i never ever would ever no matter how much i didn't like someone no matter how much someone had hurt me would i ever go to those lengths um my family my social situation my dv all of those things should never be used against me from other women and they don't actually upset me um my dv situation is my past um i'm not struggling in real life because of it i'm moving forward we're about to get a new house we're about to move on I don't have any hatred towards my ex. I don't have anything um, about about my ex-partner that I'm angry at. And if I did, it wouldn't be on the app. Like literally, I don't, I've been to all of those um, classes. I've been in the DV classes. I've been to the empowerment courses. I've done everything I have to do to get myself good with life. And people bringing it up on the app isn't triggering me. 
Like those things don't trigger me. The actual original thing that happened was terrible, but I'm not going to be triggered by words. Um, I'm a full grown woman and I tell my children all the time, like just ignore bad comments. So I'm certainly not sat here at nighttime. Who just said, am I going to leave Alicia as a mod? Why would I not have Alicia as a mod? Um, <laughs> what's Alicia done now? I am... Um, Justice for Alicia. <laughs> um, yeah, and, I, and I'll revert back to what I just said a minute ago about I have a really great mod team um, and I will always side with the mods. Um, Alicia must have been my friend now for well over a year. Um, we love the crop top queen and she, she is an awesome woman, mother and, and friend to me. Um, so I, I don't have any kind of and likewise, again, if Alicia is live and she's doing something that's offending people, don't go in alive. If she's not doing it in my live, it's not in my control. So I can't go, oh, Alicia, what did you do this morning between 11 and 12? Can you tell me if you made any comments that I need to be mad at? It's none of my business. Like when I'm... Um, like when Sophie's shopping in Tesco's, if she chooses to put some links in her pocket and not pay for it, I can't get fucking mad at it. Do you know what I mean? If she gets arrested, that's one night. And I'm not saying Sophie's a thief. Um, but I can't say to her, um, can you give me a full explanation of what you did in Tesco's this morning? Because otherwise I'm going to unmod you. What happened last night, Em? You have to phone me afterwards because I can't, I can't say particularly what happened. Um because I'm not going to talk about it. Uh, it wasn't me. It was nothing to do with me. It was just something that happened on the app that triggered a lot of people. Nothing to do with me. Hey, Glycly. Yeah, I will. So I will. Um, we know. What do you know what I mean? I literally. Do you know what I mean? The Cadbury's cream egg is always misconstrued. It's actually Cadbury, uh, the, Cab the caramel cream eggs. I don't even like Cadbury's cream eggs. Um, but yeah, no, I'm. Um, I tend to be. Um, I tend to be quite laid back. Like I've got a lot of brothers and sisters here. So there is, I'm one of six. So we've grown up with lots of bands here and lots of stuff. And like, we'll throw comments around about people's weight and stuff like that. Me and my stepdad do it to each other as well. Um, when you grow up in a big brother and sisters, like you just literally bounce all day long. We're not offended by anything. There's no one crying about it. No one getting upset. We give as good as we get. And I don't find it overly offensive on the app when people want to, make comments at me. I don't have a collection of these comments, which I'm looking at affected. I also have never, ever, and I can promise you, never heard that the live is being held about me and made a fake account so I could go and watch that live. I don't want to sit there and listen to loads of shit about me. Whether it was true or not, I wouldn't want to go, oh, everyone's talking about me badly. Let me go and get, let me go. I'll gather the kids around, we'll get some popcorn and let's go and let's go and watch. I just, I literally block and move on. Which is why when people come to me and go, so-and-so said this, I'm like, did you need to tell me? Like, do I need to know? Because it actually makes no impact, like, on me at all as a woman, as a person. Like, what you see is what you get with me. I do think I've been the same person since the day I joined the app. I'll always be the same person. Um, does the hate get really, like, overwhelming sometimes? Absolutely. Is there days where I panic about coming live? Absolutely. Um, but it's not the individuals or the individual comments. There's not someone out there who is grinding me down and really affecting me. It's just sometimes I think, oh, do I want to be on an app where it's like constant toxic and it's allowed to happen? And then people can go live and switch it and be like, well, I've been bullied and this happened to me and this happened. And you're sat there like, huh? Huh? And no one kind of jumps up in the box and goes, um, actually, um, yes, absolutely, Saf. If, if, um, if people see lives being held against me which are absolutely horrific please message the mod the username and be like i've seen this person saying this this and this the mods will then come to me just with the username and i'll just block it because if the mods okay it i'm absolutely good with just blocking um you know and sometimes once a day the mods will send me 30 30 screenshots of um accounts and i will block every single one of them i never once question it if the mods say to do it do it um and i don't want people even to defend me on the app because um, I think if we're in their lives watching and we're asking for proof or we're defending, we're actually giving them more views and that's what it's about for these people. So I would just get, okay, that's about my favourite creator or one of the creators I like, so I'm not going to go in there. Um, which is exactly the same as what I would do. Um, I, If I see someone, like, um, like someone 
who I liked on the app originally and I see them acting in a way which is not very nice or not very kind or they're doing like these horrific exposures and, and revealing messages and stuff which I think should never be done um, I will just unfollow and sometimes block because I just think oh, I don't really want you around my community if that's who you are um, I I am not someone who's going to go, OK, I'm going to show you all these screen recordings today. I'm going to show you loads of text messages. I'm going to show you loads of private messages I've had with this person, this ex mod, because they've gone live about me with Angie. I'm not going to ever do that. I'm literally just going to go, OK, make up your own mind. Like, I don't keep things for that reason. I don't agree with ever showing anyone's private messages. If someone messages me in private, that should always be private, no matter what the situation outside of it. Um, and I'll stand by that forever. We have to hold ourselves to account, right, as women and as mothers and as people and as human beings, that we're always acting in a way that is carrying integrity in our lifetime and is showing our children kind of a good way. So there is never going to become a time where I'm that attacked. That I'm like, right, let's fire up alive. Let's drag this person. Let's talk about their looks. Let's talk about how they, what they're doing. Let's talk about this. Let's show messages. Let's destroy it. It's not within me as a person. It's not how I've been raised. It's not how... Um, my mum or my sister would be like, oh, yeah, I can understand why you did that. It's not something I'd ever want my children to see me do. Um, so I just literally don't act that way. I'm, I'm quite an empath. And I literally, even in certain situations last night, I'm sat there thinking, oh, my God, I hope, you know, someone phone 999, someone get some help, someone do something. Why is no one doing something? Um, it instantly gets in my heart where I'm just like, oh, God, someone do something. I don't sit there and think, oh, I'm glad. Like, I, I don't have that malicious side of me. Um Mary, I, I do understand a little bit. Um, I, exactly, Millie. I do understand a little bit because obviously the more well we do, it does attract hate. And then when people hate on you, it brings everyone out of the woodwork and they're like, oh, I'm going to get my five minutes here and I'm going to attack. There was a lot of people that have chose to come out of the woodwork that I'm not surprised by and I was waiting for. Um, and when they did, I was kind of like, phew, that, they've done that now and it's done because you're just constantly waiting for these people. Um, but it still won't get a reaction from me because, you know, that stuff has been dealt with years ago. Um, I still wasn't in the wrong, still was never in the wrong and never will be in the wrong. Um, and it wasn't true. So it's just kind of like I just didn't, I said to the mods, I don't want to see the screen recorders, don't want to know about it. Um, it's got nothing to do with what we're doing. Um, and I just want to get back to that. I want to get back to pure crime, pure awareness. Um, we've never been part of the FYP side of the app. We've never been part of the drama side of the app. We've never been part of the exposure live about different creators. We've got actual real people to expose pedlos and people who, who may affect our children we've got dv perpetrators out there killing women that we need to expose we've got police officers killing black people we need to expose we've got right real life real important things to do um, as a community so whether one person is upside down naked on the app or another person is hanging out of a window with their children or another person has called, called people bad words not our business not our interest um you know we can impact massive change during lives with petitions and awareness and we can literally get missing people's faces out there get justice for murder victims family we can talk about knife crime that's what we're here to do and i don't want to waste my time anymore i don't want to waste my time anymore i hope fat freak goes back to it as well fat freak was like the male version of me on the app doing um exposing people off the app people who were on the app as well hurting children all of that stuff and i and i love his platform and i've got a lot of time for fact freak and i hope that the fact freak um after being attacked for the last couple of days can kind of take a couple of days off and come back strong i wish nothing but the best for fact freak um sorry guys i'm just vaping for a second nanny i haven't actually had a look this morning because i've been trying to get rid of some people in the discord change things over get some rules in there and everything else um i will have an update on megan tonight um i will put a video up today in a minute about jack so people can share and um me too so um so that people can share it and repost it and stuff and i'll put the new information for people that missed the live last night tonight we are tackling the absolutely massive case of the West Memphis Three. We're gonna talk through the crime. It's absolutely brutal crime that happened to three young children. We're gonna talk about the arrest of three people who didn't commit the crime. And we're gonna start the week today of our people that have made false confessions, um, which is a really good subject because a lot of people always ask me, hey, Betty, people always ask me, Megan's Law is on 31. Uh, not Megan, sorry, it's on 31, that's brilliant. Um, we're going to talk about the one question people always ask me and people always say like we do a case and they're like obviously they're guilty because 
whoever whoever says they've done something they haven't done a lot of people and i've got some really interesting cases to tell you guys about um and what we'll do is we'll try to off the back of that as well um so that's what we're doing we're doing a whole week on wrong convictions kaylee um and false confessions um what we're going to do is in between that we will keep doing missing people's cases as well by video and justice in the uk that we need help with on videos and of course we will keep up with megan's case quite closely this week because hopefully in the next couple of days we'll have some big news um no kelly it's fine people like to um speak about it different ways the wrongful uh, the wrongful conviction we're doing tonight three people went to prison for um two decades for a crime they'd never committed off the back of a um a boy with a really light, low IQ Q being bullied into it by police and, and naming his friends as well. Um, Becky, how are you, Becky? We did go to school together. Um, I also want to talk about the fact that the three young boys who were murdered still don't have justice. Um, they still don't have justice. And why no sound? There is sound, isn't there? You might have to go back out and come back in. Um, but if you can't hear me, you won't know that. Um, <laughs> um yeah, Laura, that's what we need to do. Go back to basics. We've always done that. We've always done cases. From the day I joined the app 18 months ago, it was always about true crime. It was always about getting justice for people and awareness. Um, and we need to not be pushing that way. It's going to be half nine tonight because the kids will have to go to bed. Um, and I've got them all three off on some holidays. And we are trying to pack at the same time. I promised myself I'll do some packing today. And um, I haven't so far. Um Let's say seven thousand members. Congrats! Get me to a get to a thousand. Everyone send a heart me. Um, yeah, if people, although we're not pushing for this competition, if we can keep up sending our normal heart me's, we are top regional team at the moment, which is absolutely amazing. And if you do have those um, votes anyway from your normal like comments and just your free ones, please do send them. We're just not pushing anymore for it. We're just it's too much. It really is too much. We have done the Terry Harris case. Um, as soon as I found out it was more than one day and I was like, what? Like we did so well in that first day. We had so much support, but we just can't keep doing it. It's taken away from everything else. And I have told Zach as well that we will not be, um, my gift bag. How was the party? Did you get your gift bag sorted? Um, I went to the party, but I don't know what gift bag it was. Um, I don't even think my brother gave me a party bag. Um, it was, it was, it was nice barbecue actually. It was nice. Um, got some lovely family photos and stuff. And the kids had such a nice time. Yeah, his my brother's a bit posh, yeah. My brother has no children. Um, did I get the gift bag for the house? Um, I've got loads of deliveries, but I haven't been through them all yet because I wanted to open it in the house, um, at the new house. Thank you. It's my new pyjamas from Primark. Uh, it's, a, it's a lazy day today. What was I going to say? Yeah, um... My brother's quite posh because he hasn't got children. He's just bought his first house. He's doing it up with his girlfriend. So when he got his birthday cake, he like literally had like a cookies and cream one and a massive chocolate one come out in this double thing. Um, it was actually really nice. And all the grandkids, my mum's grandkids got to play together in that because I've got six brothers and sisters, obviously. Everyone's got kids, apart from Jordan, actually. Um, so there's just loads of kids there as well. Thank you, Nigel, for... Um, yeah, Kelly, we had such a manic day yesterday. I took the girls shopping yesterday. We did we did Primark. We literally went to the bookshop. The girls got books. They all got books. And then we got home, had half an hour to get ready to go back out. Thanks, Cheryl. And then we literally got home late and then I had to come live very quickly. Yesterday was mad. We, I'm going to fix that as soon as I come off, I promise. I literally um, keep saying it and I never do. And then Sophie messaged me saying, remember to sort it out. And I went, nope. <laughs> I'm on my way to my brother's party. I can't. Um, but yeah, I hope this talk today has actually just made people realise what, we, what we're trying to do and what we're trying to achieve. Um, I don't have hate for anyone on the app. I don't have hate for anyone in, in life. Um, it's just it's pointless, isn't it? And it's so consuming. Spy Devil, you found them. Thank you for voting. If you can vote them, that's amazing. Um, you know, I just, I just literally um, want to do what I always do. Um, and I don't think I've ever even played back at these games or said anything mean about anyone. I've never held hate lives or any of that. Um, and just hope people realise that and we just, just keep moving forward um, and doing what we do best. Oh, yeah, thank you, Millie. I've got so uh, The kids didn't get chocolate in the first though They didn't, actually, but I did message my brother saying, oh, I'm going to make sure Tori's got extra chocolatey hands before I come. He had all white, like, furniture and white front room. Um, 
and I could just see Tori like literally get in the house with chocolate cake and I'm like trying to grab her with wet wipes my brother walked around with some wet wipes in his hand like constantly um constantly offering them to the children <laughs> um so I've been recognized twice in my hometown um one I was scanning shopping in co-op and someone went I really like you on TikTok and Taylor went bright red like mum let's just leave because it's embarrassing for her and they were like I watch you every night you know and I was like okay um and then they were like oh um what case are you doing tonight and I'm like I never tell <laughs> and then another guy who weirdly used to live in the same road as me when I only had Tegan um I literally was walking through town and he was busking on a guitar and then he went, hey, you're that girl of TikTok. And I was like, yeah. And he was like, I'm on TikTok. My name's Mr. Majika and I play the guitar. Could we do some lives together? And I was like, well, add me and I'll add you back. So I was just like, I can just imagine like he's there like when I'm cleaning windows and I'm like, well, one day what happened? And I just, I just didn't know how it would work together. So I was just like, please don't ask me to do it. Because I would literally, I don't think I'd ever say no to someone who's trying to do something good on the app and, and trying to make like a career of it. Like, so I would literally have ended up with him playing guitar with me doing crime cases and him going doo -doo 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 on his guitar with me there like, oh. hello, Mrs. Arrow. Um, I could just imagine also I'd quit the crime stuff because I don't like saying no to anyone. I'd be trying to sing. Um, I'd literally have a banjo being like, well, I'm cleaning windows. Um, so I was just thinking, okay, I'll see you later. <laughs> um, but never like, do you know what I mean? No one's ever come up to me and like asked for my asked for a pitch with me, and I would be like, "Can you just get my head in? Because my body's really chubby." Um, smooth criminal could be a shot. It would be a good one, wouldn't it? Um, you do that really well. Um, yeah. So no, no massive. I avoid things like um, I've been invited to like TikTok events and stuff before up at the head office, and I'm like, it's not really for me. Um, I don't really want to go and hang around with loads of other big creators or kind of win an award or perform up at the thing or anything like that. Um, I hope you're seeing it when you do it today. I always, when I'm cleaning the windows with the kids, like, when I'm cleaning windows. I don't know any more of the song, though. Sent face. Thank you, Bethany. We are number 12. I think, I think that's pretty decent. I mean, we're not putting hours into it. And I am... Um, <laughs> I came in like a wrecking ball. Um... I do think, like, obviously, when I when I looked in the competition, it's people who are battling all day to do the competition. It's not particularly people who have the best communities on the app. So, to me, then I'm out. Because I just wanted, like... We've got top regional team, which means, like, we obviously have a really strong team. Um, but if, in order for me to have the strongest team on TikTok, it means taking thousands of pounds off people during the summer holidays with their kids and everything else, then that doesn't make us the best team, does it? It makes us the richest team. And that doesn't count for shit that's why i always say with the popular the popular is always kind of quite impactful because you just do it by sending the heart me's and like the team bracelets and stuff it's very cheap to do it and it's comments and it's votes and it's like all of the um the what's it called the quizzes where we ask questions what's it called a poll so those things get you there so it's like community involvement and engagement and like do you know what I mean if i if i had to battle for seven days to become the tiktoker of the year then I'm not a TikToker of a year. I'm just the best person I'm on. I'm putting the most hours in. That's it. Um, and in the summer holidays, um, I cannot be online all day, every day to win a competition. I've got to be a mum first. That's what happens in life. Um, so yesterday someone was like, oh, if you want to get back into the top 10, you need to have um, spent at least eight hours on live battling today. I was like, no. It was hard enough doing the three battles we needed to get bonus points. And it may be worth doing that, like doing like just if you're going to get bonus points. But to be fair, if we win, we're not winning top community. I honestly think that we have the best community. We have the best community because we come live every night and we discuss cases. We we do the signatures. We do different stuff. We talk about cases. We share videos. We literally know who crime victims are. We know who needs justice. All of those things. That makes us the most empathetic, kindest, most amazing community. Um, you can't buy that shit. You know what I mean? um you can't buy that shit so yeah so i just think every time i see a competition it's like oh best community and i'm like oh we could do that like we are the best community and then i see like like i think zach's ahead of us by so much that i think it would cost about thirty thousand pounds to get there 
Now, we may have a massive community and that may mean £5, £10 for everyone, but it doesn't make us the top community. It means that you've given me the most of your money and that's shit. Do you mean TikTok is the only winner? Truthfully, yeah. Like, and I saw some posts online, which I won't say who they're about or whatever, but I saw some posts online that said, oh, I really wanted my favourite TikToker to win and we've been pushing but they've stopped doing all of their normal content and it's just pushing for this competition. And now I'm kind of regretting my choice and I don't want people to feel that way about me. Um, I don't want people to be like, well, she's not even doing crime anymore. She's just going live asking for this gift, this gift, this gift, and this gift. It was fine to do it for a couple of hours the other day and we actually got third place. Um, but I don't want to do it for four days. Like, it's just tiring. I want to be in a minute when I come offline. I want to get food with the kids. I want to make sure I've got my photos ready for tonight's case because I've already researched it. I want to make sure I go in Bath Tory, do all the things I need to do. I'm going to pack two big bags. <laughs> I'm going to pack two big bags for the house because I need to. I'm going to promise myself I would. Um, Tory's toys are taking over my life. And then I want to put the kids to bed later on, get some dinner and, and come live and do my crime case. That's what I want to do. Um, I will show you the picture of the backpack because if you do have, um, like if we, if you get, um, I think it's yesterday's votes you'll have in your backpack. Let me find it. So let me just make it smaller. So all of your votes. What are we have for dinner? So to Carla, we've got um we've got this like pasta vegetable thing. Like it's like a cheese vegetable pasta thing that comes in this bag. And we're gonna have it with pork, I think. Um which Tori will eat the pork but won't eat vegetables. Um well she'll eat broccoli, but she won't eat this cheesy pasta thing. So if you can click in that thing, um, and if you do have, hey Faith, if you do have any votes, please spend them, but please don't go out of your way to, to get more votes for me because um, really do, I know as a mum, right, and a single mum um, especially, but I suppose it's for everyone in the UK right now. Thank you, Ima. Um, we are, nobody is living rich, right? We're all struggling. And if you could send me a big gift or you could take your children out down to the seafront and get them some ice cream do the ice cream always say the same thing always have since i've started tiktok like honestly like if you messaged me and said oh i took the girls down the seafront today and got them an ice cream um instead of gifting on tiktok for this week i would be like oh my god it would make me cry and i'd be like you're absolutely amazing um you know people um that tell me thomas like, i want to know where her money's going so it goes on my children at all times it's providing them furniture for this new house um the only things my kids ever ask me for is books and I'm quite happy um, to buy them books. And Tori Taylor will do several jobs for me for a book. All she wanted to do yesterday was go to Waterstones and buy one of her um, anime books, which we did. Um, and they know, <laughs> the bills must be high on my mansion, they know that every time I go live, every time I do anything on TikTok, um, I'm doing it for cases. They know all of this stuff. Um, and... The money that I've made recently has all gone into my PayPal ready to buy furniture and that's where it's gone um, because we're moving into a new house with nothing. Um, and I, I don't have to explain myself to anyone, to be fair. He actually put out the other day, I live in a mansion and had 50 grand. Um, yeah, Tori got an um, Inside Out 2 book, an emotions book, and it's like a like a chapter on joy, a chapter on sadness. And you have to fill out all the different things, um, like what makes you happy, what makes you sad. Um, so she picked that and Taylor got an anime book. Um, yeah. Um, I do. I, th I think my um, I think my community know that like, everything I do is my kids anyway. Do you know what I mean? You haven't seen me like some of the other creators on ten holidays this year. I've not been on holiday since two thousand and five. My children have never been on a holiday, so I think people question all the time. The columns we we do have that book as well. I think they're brilliant. The um, a lot of the emotion books like that is really um, really really good to have. I love the books for Taylor even because she's 11. You know, those books where they're like um, prompt books where they like have something at the top, like say, um, say the top three things that make you happy, the top three things you want to improve on. Then you decorate all the pages and stuff like that. I just love all that stuff. Growing up, I was really poor. We were like dirt poor. Um, lived in homeless accommodation and stuff like that when I was a kid. Um, but we had books and I used to literally, my library card meant the world to me. And I would literally go get eight books a week and I would read all eight a week. And my children have that same love for reading. Yeah, like a gratitude journal. Um, 
Tegan is dyslexic. She really struggles with reading, so she doesn't really enjoy a book. Um, she doesn't enjoy books as much. Um, so I can't fault her for that. She struggles with reading. But my two younger ones absolutely adore books. Um, and I think it's really important for children. And I think it makes them so clever as well to give them a love of books. Like you can't... The love of books children will have will give them a world outside of their life. It will give them a real sense of adventure. It will give them a brilliant imagination. It will make them better at their GCSEs. She does listen to some audiobooks. Um, Kat, she started getting into some kind of podcast sometimes. Thank you, Jess, which is kind of a good basis for her. She likes, like, she loves true crime stuff, to be fair, um, which doesn't surprise me. She <laughs> wouldn't surprise you. She's 17 now. And she started watching things like Kendall Ray and Eleanor Neal. Now, she'll never watch them with me, but she tries to watch them before me and then try to give me information, which is so annoying. And she will literally <laughs> come downstairs and be like, have you watched Eleanor Neal this week yet? And I'm like, no. And she's like, I'm not going to tell you about it. But the man is sick when he put that woman in that suitcase. And I'm like, I don't want to know about it until I've watched it. And she's like, I won't tell you. They caught him by DNA. And I'm like... Are you actually kidding? And then she's like, no, I don't want to tell you about the case. I'm just telling you, like, what I found fascinating. And then I'm like, yeah, no, but you've just you've just told me basically what it's about. And she's like, I haven't. And then if I say to her, why don't you come and sit down and watch it with me, like, in the front room? She's like, no, I, um, I'll watch it with you after I've already watched it because she wants to tell me what's going to happen before it happens. It's so annoying. Well, she'll come downstairs, she'll come downstairs the day before Mother's Day and she's like, I've got you a present for Mother's Day, but I don't want to tell you what it is. And I'm like, well, don't tell me because I won't have any other surprises. She's like, it's a jumper, but I won't tell you what colour jumper. <laughs> I'm just like, for God's sake. And then she's like, um, you're going to really like it though. And I'm like, oh my God. Um, but it's just, she can't keep a secret for nothing, like not one thing. And I'll often be at family events and then Tegan will say something. And I'm like, you absolutely not. Why would you say that out loud? Um, oh, Eve, that Tegan literally is constant. Um, no, Bombastic, just spend your votes because the votes aren't actually double. It's just some of the gifts count for double points. So like the heart, the heart thing. We're not even pushing for this competition. I think it's nice if people um, send their votes to me. We're not pushing for any more for anyone who's just come in. It's too much money. It's too much pressure on the community. And sending loads of gifts does not make us a strong community. Um, turning up every day, supporting each other, being lovely to each other. That's what makes us a strong community. And it, I know, right, thank you, Laura, for sending votes. I know if I got you guys to push, you would 100% back me and we would come top five of that competition easily. But I just want you guys to take your little bit of extra money you've got this week and go to the beach with the kids, buy the kids some ice lollies, buy the magazine from the shop that are fucking extortionate. Like all those things, just, just spend it on your kids, please. Buy them some sweets. Um, do do that for me, please, because it means so much more to me than you gifting me. Um, thank you so much, guys. I have literally um, been so lucky in the last couple of months the support you guys have given me. I've managed to save up a little tiny like nest egg, which means I can carpet a new house, buy an oven, buy a fridge freezer. I've bought the girls' beds. I have had the wish list up and people have been so generous. Like they have sent the girls' bed in. They have sent the girls' lights for their room. They have sent Tori Bingo and Bluey, which was the only thing she put on her list. <laughs> um, they have literally been so generous. Everybody has. Amazon have bought about 30 parcels a day. You guys have done so much for me and I just don't want to keep asking for more. I just want you guys to show up for the cases and to put the cases. Love you, Lady J. Um, I have been so lucky and so fortunate and I do feel like my biggest fear as a mum... Hey, Mara. Uh, my biggest fear as a mum was coming out of a, a refuge that has furniture and is quite a nice place to live because when we come into this house it was you know we're the only ones here it's a safe house so we're coming out of a place that's quite nice it's quite nice decorated it's got a really nice kitchen everything else um we're going to come out of that and move into a house where there's no carpet no oven no nothing and i thought they're going to be like why can't we go back to that like why are we coming out of it into this shithole so now i've got the situation where i can go in and say okay well, we've got nothing for now but we've got we've got stuff to do stuff um and we're gonna we're gonna get the carpet today and we're gonna get your beds up i don't know how i'm gonna build those beds but i'm gonna give my best go um i've got i've got my brother-in-laws um two of them that are going to be able to help my mum's going on holiday to australia for a month so it's really bad timing 
Tams and Glass has been released. Oh, well, that's not good news. I'll have a look when I come off Abby. Um, you know, I am lucky because so many other mothers um, and before I joined TikTok, I would be in that situation where I was being put into my own home finally with nothing, with no money, no ability. Like, I'm not even allowed to job work living here because if I get a full... Like, I'm allowed to, like, this what I do, um, which is self-employed, but I'm not allowed to spend hours out of the house because... Otherwise, they're like, you don't need it. And I'm not allowed to have other people here looking after my children, even family. No one's allowed here. So you're you're in a really shit situation. So I'd be coming out, like when I was a kid, we'd come out of homeless accommodation when I was, I think it was seven, um, moved into the house my mum still lives in now. And there was no carpet. The house was trashed. The the walls were like yellow colour from the man who had died in the house from smoking. Just they, everything was covered in like nicotine. And we just kind of moved in and it felt like this doesn't feel great. Like getting our own house finally doesn't feel good. Uh, and I still have the trauma from that. And I didn't want my children to feel that way. I want them to feel excited. And you guys have helped me to do that. Like they all put like three or four things on the wish list. And I will sort out the wish list, guys. I will because I know people have asked me to... Um, to do it and I'm so bad at doing stuff but you've helped me to give them a little thing to be excited about like you know a little bookcase for Tori and some lights for Taylor and and some bedding some pillows for the girls beds and all those little things which which is amazing so my wish list is in my bio but people are saying they can't access it so I need to go and recopy the link and do it again which I'll do when I come off um and I don't like asking for anything for myself yet I don't at all hey Miss Blue um I don't like asking for anything for myself but for the children I will do that because obviously I just want them to have the best they deserve the best they've been through so much um thank you Aaron um and you guys have been amazing like you've become part of my life every day um hey Warrior Princess hey Paul have you just come in Paul so we're doing a case at half nine. We're doing the West Memphis Free, which is a false conviction case where people served over 20 years in prison for the crime. And I think it's about two decades. Um, and we're going to talk about the murders that led up to that and the fact that those murders are now unsolved and who we think did it and who may have done it and what evidence is available. Thank you, Jimmy. Oh, Paul, I'll be in the Discord in a minute. You can let me know what's going on. Um, yeah. So, guys, I'm going to get off now. I'm going to go and do some packing. And I'll, I'll do that wish list first. So in my list, I'll do the wish list first because it's going to take me seconds. Yeah, Jamie, of course you can. I will then do the video for Jack. So for anyone who missed me talk about Jack last night and the like the evidence that's come up in his phone, I will do that video so you can repost to reshare it and we can get that out there. And then I will pack two bags of stuff so I feel like I've done something today. So when I come back online and you say, did you pack some stuff? I'll be like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I packed my raisins from the sh shelf. Um, I'm going to try and... Um, start on Tori's toys because we've got shit everywhere I've done my goats yeah um yes so that is that's all I kind of wanted to address um while we're on thank you guys for being so supportive thank you and like I said we're not pushing for this competition anymore for anyone who's just come in it's too expensive it's too fucking much and we did what we needed to do and we are the best community with the top regional team and if being the top community means we have to pay to get there it's not for us is it um yeah and I will have more, um, no, sure, Tori's not short for um, Victoria. Uh, I needed I needed a T name. So I had Tegan Taylor and I needed a T name. Um, so we just come up with Tori. Um, yeah, hello, Grifter. I probably will turn the comments off while I do the majority of the case because it's going to be a lot of information. And with my ADHD, with the cases that are long like that, I can absolutely lose my way. I will go and add Megan into my link tree as well at the same time I'm uploading that wish list. Okay, so please just give me 20 minutes to sort those things out. Half an hour to do that Jack case. Um, I've got a video up about Sonia Massey and then I will be on at half nine. Okay. Um, and I love you all. Thank you guys for all the support. Love you all. Have a brilliant afternoon and I will see you at half nine. Bye guys. The Observer, providing you with the latest TikTok drama from across the UK.